Sven, my congratulations with your book. Would you tell some words? What is your book about? Mm -hmm. Of course, it's about uh, Gavrila Princip, I understand it, but mm. what did you discover? Yes. What did you say new? Yes, yeah. So, let me first tell you, uh, first of all, that it, it's not a, a biography. We, we're not going to... We didn't write too much, of course, here and then, yes, about his life, being born, how he evolved, etc. No, it's a book about perception. So. We were struck by the fact that uh, 100 years after the beginning of the First World War, Gavrilo Princip was all of a sudden there again, but for example being compared with nowadays terrorism. Uh, newspapers writing if Gavrilo Princip would, be born, would have been born in the 21st century, he would have gone to Syria to fight. Very strange perceptions. So we were interested in the image of Gavrilo Princip in 100 years of our literature and our press, uh, newspapers, magazines and so on and you find so many images in there going from Princip as a hero until Princip as a terrorist and everything in between. And we wanted to see what kind of Princips showed up uh, during the last uh, uh, century and one of our main conclusions is that almost every generation, of course also inspired by several ideologies, every generation uh, created or had its own uh, princip. Um, so the book is, is about Gavrilo Princip, but it's also about our literature, uh, our, uh, our press, it's about perception, it's also a personal story about me and uh, Jelica, uh, Jelica Novakovic, who is the co-author of the book, uh, how we, for example, um, experienced uh, 2014 the year of commemoration of the beginning of the First World War and um, all the things that happened during that year, the books that had been published, are also there in our critical analysis of Gavrilo Princip, the assault in Sarajevo and everything that came out of his uh, shots. Not only about Gavrilo Princip, it's also a personal story about um, um, trying to find a bridge and trying to find connections between two different cultures. Jelica coming from Serbia slash Yugoslavia, me coming from the Low Countries, Belgium, Flanders, Antwerp. And also in our first book, which was a, a, an alternative city guide to, to Belgrade, we tried to look for uh, ways, um, manners of writing, um, <clears throat> elements, to bring our different cultures closer to one another. I mean, this is all Europe. Of course, Serbia is part of Europe, but it's the other side of Europe, as it is often called. And there's a lot of misunderstanding um, uh, from our side about the Balkans and the other way around from the Balkans about our countries. And so, Princip was a very grateful uh, symbol to start with this bridge between our countries because uh, the boy was from Serbian origins and on the day of his assault, on the 28th of June 1914, he was carrying a gun which was made in Belgium. So this was a very nice starting point to start our story, not only about the perception of Gavrilo Princip, but also about yeah, friendship and our mutual interest in each other's literature, culture, mentality, history, and so on. But can you give me a concrete example of um, mutual uh, understanding or misunderstanding. Uh -huh. uh, yes, so uh, for example uh, a lot of uh, what has happened in the 90s, in the 90s during the Balkan Wars uh, in which uh, Serbia was also always presented as the, the big bad boy has influenced our view on Serbia, not only on Serbia, actually on the Balkans as a whole, former Yugoslavia. Greece, which is now in these days also in the, the headlines of the news, is a Balkan country. And of course there's corruption, of course the economics are uh, uh, going bad. Um, okay, that's only one part of the story. We also wanted to show that there's other things to write about. And for example, I think our readers uh, are not always that well informed about uh, the history and uh, the culture of 
Well, I'm, we're talking specifically about Serbia, but we're also talking about Yugoslavia and, and, and the Balkans. Any other way around, um, it's, uh, it's not always uh, uh, that clear, the, the picture people have of, uh, of, of Belgium. A city like Antwerp, of course I like to promote the city of Antwerp as much as I can. And I can do this through this book, for example. I can tell something about figures from Belgium, Flemish history, which can be compared with uh, Serbian uh, or Yugoslav historical figures. Um, since Jelica is also a specialist in, uh, in literature, in our literature, she translated a lot of our famous writers into Serbian. Um, she's also the excellent person to uh, start comparing writers with. Writers from here, writers from there, who have similar things to talk and to, to write about. So also, thanks to her translation work, uh, she's also creating that bridge between our cultures and she's the ultimate <clears throat> promoter of our literature and through the literature also our culture uh, in, in, in Serbia. She has these magazines in which she publishes a lot of articles, essays um, in Serbian about our culture and so she's the perfect person uh, to, uh, to write such a book to bring our cultures uh, closer to one another. And she's a great friend of mine which helps also a lot. You have started <coughs> intercultural dialogue. Something like that, yeah, you can call it like that. Um, that's also one of the, 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 the baselines of our book as it is pr being promoted. That um, I'm afraid that in these days when they're commemorating the First World War, it's always very locally concentrated. We're talking about one region. Uh, one uh, land, um, one side of the story. Um, I didn't see too many pan-European commemorations. Of course there were some events where all the statesmen from all over Europe were invited, but I think uh, yeah, our, our book really wants to, to, to create this, this bigger picture. We're talking about Europe and with Belgium on one side of Europe and Serbia, Yugoslavia on the other side. And um, yeah, this is really the starting point and the purpose of our, as you like to say it, intercultural, uh, intercultural um, study, intercultural uh, story. Yes. And as for the hero of your book, is it a hero for you too? Um, well, I guess he's a kind of a hero um, because he, um, well, let me first tell me this. Um, our opinion is we can understand why he did it, why he killed the uh, Austrian Archduke uh, Franz Ferdinand. We can understand his um, rebellion, the, the protest against uh, oppression, Austrian oppression, Austrian colonization of his country. But me personal, I cannot agree with an act of violence. So, this was also a conclusion, a very interesting conclusion made by an, uh, a Yugoslav committee. There was an investigation committee, rather symbolic, a couple of years ago, with participation of all kinds of historians from all over Europe and different parts of Yugoslavia. And one of their conclusions was indeed, yes, we agree with his act of uh, rebellion to stand up against the oppressor, but no, we cannot accept uh, uh, the fact that he committed a murder. So it's double. He was a very young boy, he was actually too young to, uh, to um, how to say, to, to, to talk and to think about these serious matters, but of course he wa it was because he was so young that he was so dramat dramatically choosing for this action, taking up a gun and, and shoot uh, the um, uh, uh, Jules Franz Ferdinand and his, uh, and his wife. So, um, yes, he was a hero, but uh, no, I, can, I cannot agree with uh, his act of violence. Methods. Yes, the method, indeed. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, controversial position. Uh, maybe it is, yes, because, uh, well, it depends on whom you talk about. Uh, 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 Gavrilo Princip, it depends a bit with which side. Uh, for example, uh, we, we also show this in the book. Uh, 
we uh, we took a picture from uh, an investigation, uh, an inquiry they did in Politica. It's uh, the biggest uh, uh, national newspaper in Serbia, and there was an, uh, uh, a questionnaire. Uh, do you consider Gavrilo Princip as a hero or as a terrorist? And of course, the major part of the people accepts him as a hero. Now, if you move to another place of the former Yugoslavia, because Yugoslavia was Princip's dream, he wanted to get rid of the Austrian occupation and create a bigger Yugoslavia, bring all the South Slav people together in one uh, country and give them the, uh, the power to rule themselves. So, of course, in the 90s, the whole country uh, broke apart. And also during the Second World War, already there, there, were, um, there was civilian uh, unrest in, 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 in the country. Um, so, um, if you now go to these other fragments, now uh, independent states of the former Yugoslavia, you get a different picture. Um, in, in Bosnia, for example, you can find in many places still some Yugo nostalgia. And Tito was, of course, a fan of Princip, so he will return every now and then. In Croatia, the picture is a bit lesser, because there, in Croatia, there was a lot of pro-Austrian uh, support during the Austrian-Hungarian um, Empire. So they would rather, not all of them, of course, but they would rather consider Princip as the one who, who caused, who is to blame for the First World War and to blame for the, the falling apart and the, the, the disappearance of the Austrian Empire. <coughs> so... It's really a matter whom you talk about that. We also saw this in, in, in sources, books we read and we analyzed, that yeah, some historians even are not able anymore to look from a distance to 1914 because they look through glasses defined by what happened in the 90s. In the 90s, the Serbs were the big, uh, the, the big, um, the big enemy the guys who, who created all the chaos and disintegration of Yugoslavia. So, of course, Gavrilo Princip was also a Serb and also and, uh, on the aggressive part of, uh, of the story. So, this, of course, you, can, you cannot do. This is a, 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 how you say that, uh, this is a revision of history. As an historian, you cannot do that. You have to be, always try to see as objectively as possible towards uh, history. So it really depends on, yeah, on personal and probably cultural, uh, ideological uh, background how you, how you look at uh, Gavrilo Princip. Uh, we tried to... Well, this is st our starting point. Of course, it's an impossible starting point, but we, uh, somewhere in the introduction of our book we literally write, we want to look, we want to try and, and look for the naked Princip. Put all these clothes of ideology, all his, these perceptions, all the, the ways he was reinterpreted. Uh, put that away, put that aside, show that, make that analysis. And then to, to come and meet the naked prince. And what did you find? Well, it's, it's probably impossible because I guess in the end also I can only talk for myself, but probably I'm me too. I am somehow, I have a another purely objective <coughs> perception of, um, of a guy like uh, Gavrilo Princip. Um, maybe, and now I'm really honest, it's because I, uh, I, I read so much, um, so much rubbish, so much misinterpretations about a country as Serbia, that only by that you become maybe more pro-Serbian than is rationally um, uh, good for you, I don't know. So, the naked principle, it doesn't exist. It's probably impossible to look back 100 years and to really uh, understand what uh, went on there and, and who the guy was. I mean, you can find all kinds of um, um, motivations uh, for what he did. Of course, the first one, stand up against the oppressor, but uh, I mean, some people even say that uh, on the, of course, this is only uh, fiction or this is uh, for the novels, but uh, on the, the, the last night of his life, that is to say, the, one of the last nights before he went uh, in Sarajevo to, to kill Franz Ferdinand, uh, he, wanted, um, he wanted to be together with a girl and she, um, she refused him. Maybe that was a trigger to, to kill somebody. Of course, not, but these kind of stories... Uh, uh, are also uh, uh, surrounding uh, Gavrilo Princip.
and especially on the internet, the internet is very good on that. You can find a lot of urban legends uh, talking about uh, Gavril Princip and uh, so on that. What would have happened if he didn't go to that cafe to order a sandwich? Maybe he didn't eat a sandwich but he was eating something else. There are complete foolish analysis about that to, um, yeah, to explain everything, all the mythology that has surrounded Gavril Princip. Because he has become a uh, mythological figure. I mean, he's still there. He's never been away. Uh, like I said, every generation uh, created its own uh, principle. Um, Sven, how do you think? Uh, why is your book so important um, nowadays? <laughs> why is it so important? Um, well, important is of course a great word, but maybe we should uh, maybe I should change the word and say why is it. Uh, well, unique or um, a, a bit different from the other books about the subject. Um, I think two things. First, it's, uh, it's also incorporating an analysis of what happened last year, 2014, talking about the commemoration of the First World War. We're talking about, and that's also the personal aspect of our book, how the both of us, she in... Uh, not only in Serbia, but also in Vienna. Me here in Antwerp, also in Trieste, where I, was, uh, I happened to be on holiday uh, last uh, summer. Um, how also the First World War, and indeed the beginning of it, are, were also present there. So it's also it's not only the, fin the last 100 years, but also the commemoration year itself, first. And secondly, like I said before, um, we really want to create this this bridge um, bringing people and bringing cultures uh, together and try to with the european thought in mind try to yeah create a bit more understanding for each other's uh, mentality each other's literature each other's uh, history and yeah try to make people more enthusiastic to be curious uh, for each other it's actually an uh, the book is probably an invitation to to read more, to read books and writers which you're, are not that usual, but they're there and they're also available in translation very often. And an invitation to um, yeah to travel to each other and meet each other and talk with each other in a nice cafe because we also give some good information about nice places where you can go for a, for a drink and talk. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. <laughs>